In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make 2D melee combat top-down in Unity um, really easily. It's actually super easy and super fun to do. So let me show you how you do it. So I've currently got a scene here with my just a 2D movement script. He moves around just a little smoothly around the area. Uh, and there you go. If we come back here, you can see he has um, he has a movement script here with speed of eight. You can modify this a rigid body 2D and also a circle collider for the actual player. Um, and there you go. So we've got him um, and we want to add a melee attack to this. Now to do a melee attack, we're going to need a sword. And I have a sword in my downloads. Um, if I can drag it in um, over here, this sprite here. Um, it's actually going to be 16 pixels um, and that's actually it. This just needs to be point, quality, none and apply. Now we can actually drag this sword into our player um, just there. And as you can see on screen, that's what the sword looks like. You can download any sword sprite. You can create your own, do what you want. It's just a simple 32 by 32 sword. Um, and what we actually want to do with this, we want to parent this sword. So we want to create an empty parent that's under the player parent. And we're going to call this sword and we're going to rename the actual sword to gfx just standing for the graphics of this sword um, and the reason for that is because we want to position this sword um in a basically i'm just going to set this to about minus one and one um and about 45 degrees on the actual angle now we want to make this behind our sprite so i'm going to put this negative one on the sorting layer and the reason we've nested this is so when we go to rotate our actual sword to do a slash mo motion we just have to change this rotation and not the position of the graphics as well because it will rotate around the center point which is exactly what we want so next up let's actually create our animation for our sword to do that we're just gonna we're actually gonna turn off this sword graphics we don't want our sword to be showing as we move around this world we want it to only show when we click the attack button um so in our player we're gonna go up to window uh animation and animation screen i'm just gonna dock this at the bottom here for now um and we're gonna create a new animation i'm just gonna call this the player attack animation and this could be animation where we attack. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to select this here. We're going to start recording. And I'm actually just going to turn on the swords as part of the animation. That means it will turn on and we'll actually be able to see it inside the animation. I'm then going to go to about 20 frames in. And I'm just going to set this to about uh, minus 90 degrees to, just to bring it to the opposite side now you can adjust this to be how if you want but if we stop and we play this you can see the sword is now swinging from left to right pretty quickly in a nice motion we can make this look cooler but i'll show you that at the end so we've got this nice swinging motion here now what we want to do is actually at the end of this if we just hit record again we just want to turn our sword back off because we want it to swing and then go off again just like how it starts there we go. Now, if we save, click off, and there you go, the sword will be hidden once again. Um, and that's that. We want then want to go back to our sword graphic. We're actually going to turn this on just for the moment. And we want to add a box collider 2D to this element, um, which we need to go in our scene view for here. And let's actually turn on gizmos. I'm going to edit this. I'm going to select this and bring this all the way into about the sword sides. We then want to select is a trigger because we're going to be using this to go over our enemies. We want it to go through them and not slap them around. Um, so it looks like you've sliced the enemy. Um, so we're going to make it a trigger and we're going to basically, we don't need any rigid body or anything on this because all our stuff's going to go to this rigid body. So when we slash sync, we're going to be able to, to detect the tr collision with our top level parent. So let's turn off our sword once again and back on our player, we can go down here and let's create our player attack script. Or before we even do that, let's actually work in our animator, sorry. So you see we've got an animator here called player, which is actually where our player. Now by default, this is going to constantly play. Um, so what we want to do is we want to double click the actual player attack here and uncheck it. We don't want to create a new empty state, which is just going to be our default state. If you have an idle animation, if you've got sprites you're actually using and you've got animations in here, don't worry, this isn't going to affect your actual character animation. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a transition to this new state, right? We're going to, oh, sorry, we're going to actually, 
select this and click set as layer default state and that's going to make this the default state so it's just a normal state um, which is left on we then want to move our player attack up here to any next to any state and make a transition to any state um, and what we want to do is we want to create a new parameter here so under the base layer on oh on parameters we can create a new trigger and we're going to call this attack this is what's going to we're going to call in our code to actually trigger the attack animation now to do this let's click on this line here and we need to set a few things for start we want this to be zero because we want the it to switch straight away to our uh, player attack we also want to make sure has exit time off because we don't need it exiting straight away and then we want to make a transition back to our default state that does have an exit time, but the exit time needs to be set to one. That's gonna make sure once the animation has finished playing, it will then exit. And we don't want any duration. This will make it transition instantly back to our uh, previous, uh, or back to the this state here. Now, again, if you're using a sprite sheet or something like that, you'll need to obviously do all your sprite. If you've got an attack sprite, you'll wanna do it in here and call this the same way. And you may have to call in a different sort of box collider um, and just toggle it on in that area and there we go so that's how we get our little player slide or a little player attacks uh, animator set up now we can go back to our player and actually create the player attack script we need to attack so we'll create player attack um, and click create and add now i'm going to double click this to open this up once the scripts reload that is there we go. Now I'm going to double click this to open this up in Visual Studio Code. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, create a few variables. So let's just get rid of all this for now. We'll probably bring it back in a moment. And the first variable we're going to want is actually our animator. So we're going to say serialized field private animator anim now the reason we're doing serialized field and making it private is because not everything needs to be public if we made it public it would show in the uh unity um the actual unity inspector but we actually just want to we want it to appear in there but we don't want it to be public so we're setting it as private and giving it serialized field that'll make it still visible in the inspector we don't want to serialize enough of private field this one's going to be a float we'll call this the melee speed. Now, this is how quickly we can swing our sword. So we can swing our sword, but you don't want to be attacking every second because then that might make you a bit too overpowered and you'll just be constantly attacking enemies. We're going to make it so it's delayed slightly there. And then we're going to have a damage. This is how much damage our enemy is going to take. We're then going to create a float and we can say time until melee. Uh, down here now this is actually going to be our counter so we're going to set our melee speed and this is actually going to tell us when we can attack now how that works is we're going to create a update function a pride for update and we're just going to say if time until melee is less than or equal to zero so basically if this is below is equal or below zero we're going to say we're going to check if we get our mouse button down on that frame and when we press our mouse button down, we're going to basically say anim.setTrigger attack, which is going to trigger our animation to play. We then want to set our time until melee equal to melee speed, so we reset the timer. We then want to say else, so if this isn't zero or less, we want to set our time until melee minus equal to time.delta time. And this will basically lower the time at roughly these speed of a second, the interval of seconds. Um, so this will basically mean whatever time we put in here, it should count down roughly in seconds. It's not perfect, but it'll be close enough. We then want to create one last um, event. We're going to say on trigger enter 2D. Now this is when our sword connects with another enemy because it's our trigger on our player. We're going to say if other.tag is equal to enemy. So if the collider or the trigger we enter is the enemy or the if the enemy enters our trigger we're going to say other dot get component enemy we're going to create this enemy script later uh, soon oh it's not going to let it's going to keep bugging out because it's not doesn't exist yet and we're going to call a function called take damage and then we're going to pass our actual damage we take there now let's just comment this out and just debug dot log uh other dot tag just so we know we're hitting an enemy or actually it will be an enemy so let's just say enemy hit 
like that. This is just so we ain't got this yet, so it'll stop the Unity editor from throwing errors. So let's just go back here and go back to our uh, scene view for now. Once the script's compiled, there we go. And if we scroll down, we want to set our animator, which is going to be this animator here. We don't want to set the speed at which we attack. I'm going to set this to one second. You're probably going to want this a lot lower, but I'm going to set it to one second just to show it off. And I'm going to make us do 50 points of damage. Now, our enemy is going to have 100 points of damage, but we're going to make it so you do half. So you have to hit him twice in this instance. Obviously, you can tweak that to fit your game. Um, and here you go. So now if we click, nothing happens because we've probably missed something very important. Okay, guys, so back in our animator, we forgot to actually give the condition of attack for our, our actual player attack. So what we want to do is add here and just make sure this is selected as attack. Now, if we hit play and we look where our mouse is and we swipe, you can see we swipe our sword based on where our mouse is going. So it will start from just 45 degrees out from our sword and go 90 degrees round. Um, and now if we spam click this, I don't know if you can hear me spam clicking my mouse, uh, but you can see it will actually not go every second. Now let's just do a quick test before we move on to making our enemy script. Um, we're going to set the melee to 0 0.1 to make it quite quick, just to show you the difference what we can actually have here. You can see we can actually swing it unrelentlessly and keep restarting it. So we can go swing, 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 swing. Um, but again, we're just going to set this, I'm going to set this to about 0.1. 5 or 0.25 should be enough time for our sword to get from one end to the other and then allow us to re-swing and there you go so now let's create our enemy now again we're not going to do too much for our enemy this is just to show you how you can actually do melee attack in this so we'll call this the enemy we're going to create a new tag because obviously we wanted to add a tag to them called the enemy tag to so go back to our enemy and a oh that's a game controller enemy um, and let's just move them away from our player slightly so there and make them red. Enemies are always red, right, guys? Is that, that's how it works. We'll make them slightly less red so they're not so bright and ugly looking. Um, and there you go. So we've got an enemy with an enemy script. Now, we need a rigid body on this enemy. Um, and we're going to set it to kinematic just because it doesn't need to be um, it doesn't need to be dynamic for this. Again, you can use whatever your enemy needs uh, for this instance. It doesn't need this. It uh, doesn't need too much. And we're going to add a circle collide to this just for so when we actually hit it, we know we're hitting our enemy. And that's actually all we need for the actual hit of the enemy. So if we hit play and we swing our sword, we're actually going to see in the console that we hit an enemy. You can see if you look down here, you can see it says enemy hit for how many times we actually hit the enemy. Now, we want to go back to our enemy here, sorry, and just add a new component. We need to create an enemy script. Um, and this enemy script, we're going to double click to open this up in Visual Studio Code. And this is going to be quite straightforward. We're going to basically just have a simple health system for our enemy. We need some sort of float we can damage, basically. So we want to say health for now, so that each enemy is going to have their own health. Then we want to create a public void called take damage. Now, this is the function we call in here, take damage and pass through the damage. Um, and we just need to pass through the parameter we need to pass in, which is going to be the damage. Then we're just going to say health is minus equal to damage. So we're just going to take away that, that damage from our health every time. We then want to just check if health is great or less than or equal to zero, then we're going to destroy our game object, so we'll kill the enemy, and we're just going to say debug.log enemy died. Hit save, and that should actually work. Let's go back to our player and uncomment this script here. So this should now work as expected. And if we go back here and actually allow this to reload all our scripts, give it a health of 100 by default. We can also create a prefab from this, so we can actually instantiate multiple enemies. Let's just drop enough for one there and enough for one there for this. And let's hit play. And now you can see, if we go to our enemy hit, hit two hits is all it takes. And look, we can look in the direction we want to slash to actually attack our enemies. And you can see we just slashed them all out of existence. Now, if they're coming at you at high speed, you're going to want to be a lot quicker than I just watched. 
but you can see that there. Now, one thing I just want to mention is our sword doesn't look that great. As I said, it's just a simple sprite crane. It doesn't have much going for it right now. So we can actually make this look a lot cooler by adding some trails to our sword. So if we go back to our graphics, we can turn on sword just to test this. And we want to add a new uh, effect trail to our graphics here. And we're going to call this the, uh, we'll, we'll call it trail. We, we're going to make a couple of these actual trails. Um, and now we want to set this to about 0.1. And I'm going to double click on this curve and bring it down to nothing. So we're going to have a few different slashes. And you can see this one, if we just put a little blue dot on it, you can see it's sat about there on our sword. We kind of want it further up. So we're going to start this one at the top. Um, and let's just see what, this, what happens with this. So as we slice our sword, this is going to show us an actual trail coming behind our, our actual sword. So let's turn off sword again hit play and see what actually happens. So this just make it a little bit better. You can see we get a little slash going on, but you can also see it's jumping back. And that's because our, our slot. So the reason that's happening is because we're actually turning off our sword and return it on. Now, what we probably want to do is just turn off the sprite render and the box collider for our graphics rather than turning off the whole thing. That will give our trail enough time to actually turn off. Um, and a few other things we can do is we can make the end cap slightly rounded. So we can say something like 10 and that should round out the end caps for us. So now we can also make this a lot cooler. So let's just turn back on sword. Let's actually go to this animation, uh, player attack. And where we turn this object on, let's just delete that whole property, re-record, and let's just go to our graphics and we will turn off our, or sorry, turn on our sprite render and on our box collider, because they will be off by default. Um, and then go all the way to the end and then return off our box collider and sprite renderer. We will also need to turn off emitting once we get to the end. So when we get to the end, we need to turn that off and then when we start, we'll want emitting to be turned back on. So you'll see emitting will turn on and it will turn off when we get to the end. So that will then stop it from actually emitting anything else. Now, if we actually stop recording, we click off this, go back and we actually go in here and turn these off by default and turn off emitting, we should now get the result we actually want. And I've just realized we are actually setting the timer to last a whole minute. We only need it to be about 0.5 seconds, uh, which I realized you can see they were still stuck on screen for a long time. So if we go back, finally, if we slash, you can see we get a slash effect and then it starts disappearing. Now, one trail is really cool, but we're probably going to want two trails or even three trails. So let's get this one and we're just going to lower this to about 0.4 and we'll even make this one 0.2 or maybe even 0 0.1, you can see that that's roughly where they'll be on the actual list there. And we'll make this 0 0.7, 0 0.4, and 0 0.1. There you go. That should be roughly a nice little distance from each other. Oh, and we also need to then add them all to the actual emitter here. So once again, turn on recording, turn on emitting for both the other trails. And when we get to the end, we will also then turn off emitting to stop it from emitting while we don't want it to. Turn off that and then we should actually be able to hit play one last time. And this time we're gonna get the result we want. You can see we get the free sword strike there. We can go in and slash up our player very nicely. Our enemies all getting slashed and we get these nice little slices going along our screen. Okay guys, so that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you have learned something fun here. New melee attack in 2D top-down Unity. Um, I hope you have learned ha um, some good valuable things. And I hope it helps fit into your game how you could do a nice little slashing sword animation. There's multiple ways you could do melee inside of Unity. There's ones where you could do forward thrusting slashes. There's obviously straight stabbing. There's even sprite sheet animations that wouldn't exactly work with this style of animation. Oh, sorry, this style of melee combat we've done today. But I can show you how you can do those if you want me to. Just let me down know down below in the comments and we can come up with some solutions for that. But anyway, guys, for now, I'm going to let you go. Have a lovely rest of your day. Don't forget to like the video. Comment down below if you have any questions and smash that subscribe button, guys. I will see you in the next one and peace out.